In part one, I asked a very simple question. What path does the sun take at night to return to the east to rise again in the morning? So I used this time lapse to determine the angle that the sun sets in relationship to the horizon. And I asked another simple question. What is the observed path of the daytime sun? And with the addition of the observed sunrise and the noon sun, we can get a very good idea of what the daytime sun path is. And since that sun path is not going to change direction at the horizon, this shows us that at night that sun goes below the visible surface of the Earth, which of course would not be possible on a flat Earth. Now this is an observation that is testable and repeatable from any location on Earth. Anybody can do this. So in this video, I'm going to use time lapses that I made of both the setting and rising sun, and I'm going to be able to add some additional information, a timed measurement of the sun along that path. And that is quite easy to do since the P900 has a time lapse feature. So in this case, it takes a series of photographs for 50 minutes, and then it converts that into a 10 second video. Now since the complete rotation of the Earth is 360 degrees and there's 24 hours in a day, we know that the Sun moves at 15 degrees per hour and that would be 12.5 degrees per 50 minutes. Now I currently live in Bangkok, Thailand. We're going to start off with a couple of sunsets and I use the Liven Din welder's glass to cut down on the glare but it still allows you to see the buildings in the background for a reference. And this is not a second sun, it's just an internal lens reflection. And this is how far we'll see the sun travel in 50 minutes. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the sun sets at a very steep angle here, and that's because I'm about 900 miles north of the equator. Now I started this time lapse as soon as that other time lapse finished, so here is the second 50 minutes. Now I tried to get a third time lapse, but as you can see, the clouds started coming in and it actually got to a point where the camera could not see anything at all. So I have two very good measurements and a third one that is about three quarters of the way down before the clouds come in and block everything. Now this shows the sun moving at a constant speed as it heads towards the horizon. But Flat Earther Dave Weiss makes the claim that the sun does not set at 15 degrees per hour. He's pushing the Flat Earth narrative that the sun sets due to perspective, just like a row of street lights that appear to get lower as they head off into the distance. But if Dave is right and the sun does set due to perspective and not at 15 degrees per hour, then why don't we see something like this? I didn't see this happen from my location and I know it doesn't happen from other locations. What I recorded matches what we would expect to see on the globe. Now we can ask the same simple question. What path does the sun take at night to return to the east to rise again in the morning? This is not rocket science. All it takes is a little common sense to understand that the sun is going to continue on that same path below the horizon. Now let's take a look at the rising sun in Bangkok. I did this time lapse last year in September and again I used the Levin Din welder's glass. And here is the second time lapse that I started right after the first time lapse ended. So these time lapses show exactly what the sunset time lapses show. The sun moves at a constant speed across the sky and at a very steep angle since I live near the equator. So again, it only takes a little common sense to understand that this was the path of that sun before sunrise. Now I'm going to show you the observed daytime sun path that I see in Bangkok. And again, I'll use this representation of an observer and the circle will represent the horizon around him. This is the observed angle of the sun path at sunset. The angle of the sun path at sunrise. When you live in the tropics, the noon sun is always high overhead. And the path of the sun that I see every day is at a very steep angle in relationship to the surface of the earth. And since that sun does not change direction at the horizon, it goes below me at night as it returns to the east to rise again in the morning. 
Now the North Pole is about 5,270 miles to the north of me. So flat earthers really think the sun does not continue on that same path below the horizon at night. That means the sun would have to change direction both after sunset and before sunrise to go around the North Pole. And to be honest, that makes absolutely no sense at all. But here are two well-known flat earthers that think that the sun does go around the North Pole. So what about the path of the sun that I see throughout the year? So let's start with the equinox sun path when the sun rises and sets in the east and west. Since Bangkok is about 14 degrees latitude north, that means that the observed noon solar sun is about 76 degrees above the horizon on the equinox. And as we see at every other location around the world, the sun moves to the north and south of me throughout the year. But since Bangkok is located south of the Tropic of Cancer, that means that during the June solstice, the noon sun is to the north of us. And that means that twice a year, the noon sun is directly overhead. And that just happened last week on August 16th. It also happens during the month of April. Now here's a comparison of those two sun paths, so it's quite easy to understand that as you head south, the angle of the sun path to the surface of the earth is much steeper. So you need to ask the question, does the flat earth explain what we see? And this is especially true when you consider the observed sun path that I saw when I spent over a year in Australia and New Zealand, which are in the southern hemisphere. The setting sun angles down to the left, which is in the complete opposite direction of what we see in the northern hemisphere. Now if the Earth was really flat, it makes logical sense that everybody should see a sun that is orbiting around the North Pole. But what we actually see are sun paths that are completely different for all three of these locations. Now here is one last sunset time lapse from Singapore, which is on the equator. And as you can see, that sun is setting perpendicular to the horizon. This will help us understand why these observations work on a globe. So I'm going to use the equinox when the sun is directly above the equator. And of course, when you are in Singapore, that means that the noon sun is directly overhead. And on the equinox, the sun path is also in alignment with the equator. So when you add in Earth's rotation, this explains why you see a sun setting perpendicular to the horizon when you are in Singapore. Now I'm making this graphic a little bit bigger to explain how sunsets work in the northern and southern hemisphere. Now since we live on a globe, the horizon is at a different angle for each latitude, so it is tangent to the surface of the Earth at that location. So here we have a horizon that is tangent to the surface for the northern hemisphere. Now the sun is located far enough away from the Earth that the sun rays are parallel to each other. Now as we saw in part one, the setting sun in the northern hemisphere angles down to the right. And when I align this observation to that horizon on the globe, it makes perfect sense why we see a sun angling down to the right at sunset. And let's do the same thing for the southern hemisphere. So the observed sunrise angles down to the left. And again, when I align this with the horizon in the southern hemisphere, it explains why we see the setting sun angling down to the left. So it is quite easy to understand how these observations work on a globe. So let's review what I showed in these videos. First of all, the sun continues on the same path below the horizon. And we would not see this happen on a flat earth. Now flat earthers are right and the sun does set due to perspective like a row of street lights, then we should see this. But as my time lapses show, the sun moves across the sky at a constant rate. Plain and simple, we do not see this. And finally, if the Earth was flat, the Sun should move in the same direction around the North Pole, not in different directions from different locations. So again, we would not see this if the Earth was flat. But these observed sunsets make perfect sense on a globe. So if you're a flat earther, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee because observed evidence shows that we live on a globe.